elevator in Sweden has a mnemonic built in. Just imagine the sound of a hissing elevator all the way up and all the way down. Hiss. You can even use it as a memory palace station and see it full of hissing snakes. But for now, let's take the escalator. essence is always about adding new material to an existing memory palace. So if you memorize 20 words and you want to add 10 words, how do you modify the memory palace in order to add those 10 words? And the best answer I can give you is you don't. Just leave that memory palace and build a new one or reuse the memory palace and get good at using memory palaces several times. Uh, there is a problem that comes up that's often called ghosting. I like the term the ugly sister effect a lot better. There are podcast episodes that go into detail about how to deal with these issues, but they're not issues really. They're actually strengths, they're skill. Being able to deal with ghosting or the ugly sister effect, being able to reuse memory palaces, as opposed to renovating memory palaces, which there's also a podcast about how to renovate memory palaces. But at the end of the day, the whole purpose of the magnetic memory method is not about putting information eternally into memory palaces. It's about putting information eternally into long-term memory using memory palaces. It's a core distinction. Your investment in time with a memory palace and energy and excitement and so forth is from getting the information into long-term memory so that you're actually not even accessing the memory palace anymore. That's really the answer to the question is don't renovate memory palaces, except for part of your own memory growth, your own memory experimentation. Just if that's something that you enjoy doing, inserting stations in between stations, by all means do it. But it's not really a meaningful strategy. The whole point of memory techniques, memory palaces, mnemonics, memory tricks, whatever you want to call them, is to create long-term memory that doesn't require the techniques in order to access the material, whether that's language learning, facts, whatever. Um, but it's going to be there for you if you need it, even if you wind up rewriting the memory palace techniques, or it might not be there for you, but it'll just, you know, like the, the, one of the craziest phenomenons is, is, is that, and it happens to all of us that use memory techniques frequently, is we can tell you what we memorize, but we can't tell you the imagery that we use to memorize it. We can usually tell you, though, what memory palace it was in and where it was in. Oh, look at that. That's so beautiful. I like that guy. <laughs> He's cool. Anyway, we can usually tell you all that stuff, but the actual mnemonic imagery itself is its no longer useful. It doesn't pay off in the end. What pays off in the end is memorizing information and then memorizing some more and uh, always using what you've memorized, using it as quickly as you can and just then going on to memorize some new stuff. Speaking of which, I got to rehearse some stuff that I'm memorizing right now. When will I Neo Shen? Yeah? So far so good. I'm not gonna sing on YouTube. At least not yet. <laughs> Watch out ghost, we're coming to look up your skirt. Mark our word.